Hello and welcome to Key Digital Compass Control Online Training Course Level C3 Part 3 Foundations of Template Building. In this part we will go over some of the visibility tricks, if you will, that enable multiple items to be stored on one page and in a single location. Some of those tricks, if you will, that we will discuss with you are the visibility toggle, in which many elements are located in a single place and one of which is visible while the rest are invisible. Visibility list, which enables the familiar flick and swipe gestures of iOS and, and smart devices. And one position within that list is visible while the rest are not. And the call master active indicator in which the buttons, if you will, are the elements that we press to toggle our visibility and to set our list to the desired visible position also are manipulated based on the position of the list or what is visible. As we enter Compass Navigator, this is a familiar position for those of you who have just completed C3 Part 2. This is where we left off with our project, where we have a number of uh, buttons here uh, that are going to become our call master buttons. Okay, As I press display, for example, we will have the control panel for that display that we added in C3 Part 2 become visible satellite button we press that and it will uh, call forward or call visible to the control panel for that respective de device and so on and so forth through the blu-ray player and the apple tv and right now we had just uh, completed a custom group for the apple tv control group and <clears throat> it is actually as a quick recap in the exact same position as the blu-ray control group the satellite control group, the display control group, and the Apple TV. We could see as we look at their properties there, they're all at the XY position. It was 330X and uh, 385Y. And uh, as I toggled through here, choosing which one I'd like to view, uh, you notice that I don't see anything different on my iPad. And again, just as a quick reminder, that is because these groups have been set to their visibility to become zero by default. They are invisible, where our Apple TV has not yet become uh, invisible by default. And we're going to go ahead and change that now. <clears throat> and now we are looking at an invisible space, if you will, here, okay? Um, control groups, four control groups, uh, all with the same dimensions, uh, 306 by 324, and same XY coordinates, 330 by 385, respectively, none of which are visible. Uh, how do we want to make, uh, how do we want to determine which of these control groups will become visible is, again, based on which of these buttons we press, correct? So in order to do this, we need to add some events and actions to the button. Uh, for example, the display button group. Uh, now this is just a group right now, so we, uh, we don't want to add event and actions to that group. Instead, we want to add it to this button, okay, when we press this button. And if you recall from uh, our previous uh, portions of this training, we had already added a toggle of this element. Uh, as a quick reminder, what does that mean? Let's go ahead and jump into our emulate mode here with control E and toggle means you have the up, you have the down, and then you have the over position for that button. Okay, uh, we could do that for satellite as well. Up, down, over, up, down, over, up, down over and I know we tested out all of these things here but it looks like and this is why testing is important that my text is not visible on my display button here so let's go ahead and uh, exit our emulator okay and we take a look here where we do have text in the up position okay we have let's see text no text in the down position so that was something we did not complete previously um, so 
hey, since we're throwing some reminders out there, we could go ahead and do that now as well, where it says display. Okay. And we have the text in the over position as well. Should also say display. Okay. And now we could go ahead and emulate one more time just to verify. That looks healthy. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> so let us go ahead and exit our emulator. And we want to add an additional event in action to each of these buttons, don't we? And what do we want to have happen? What event in action do we want to have happen is when I press this button, I want to be able to view my display control group. Okay? So we have here display control group. Let me minimize some of the other groups that we have here. There you go. Display control group. Okay. Uh, as it is called, displays control group underscore 306 by 324. We want to make that visible. We want to manipulate its uh, uh, graphical user element property from being invisible to being visible. So let's go ahead here. And it's actually quite a simple process. We already have one event in action on here that is in the down state. Again, when I press this button down. So let's go ahead and add another uh, add set GUI element property action. And we have to I, tell the software what element or what uh, <coughs> GUI element are we wanting to manipulate. And you can see here that we have only one page in our project, this very simple project right now. That is the main page. There is nothing on a device layer page. There is nothing on a control layer page currently. Uh, so now we're able to choose the element name. And this is why uh, naming your buttons and groups and whatnot becomes uh, very important because we have a number of items here that we're able to tell it we want to manipulate. And the one we want is actually the control group for the display. And what do we want to have happen now, now that we have selected that control group, is we'd like to affect its visibility. And we'd like to set that to the constant of 1. Again, where 1 is visible and 0 is invisible. OK. So let's go ahead here and just jump into our emulator quickly. OK. And give this a, a whirl. Looks good. Now we can see that uh, the display control group is, in fact, visible. OK. Once again, we can just click in the tree here to ex exit our emulator mode. And <clears throat> that's very nice, except for that's not all. Uh, what do I mean that's not all? Well, it may come that if we went and made uh, the satellite control group visible when we press the satellite button, the Blu-ray player vis uh, control group visible when we press the Blu-ray button, and finally the Apple TV control group visible when we press the Apple TV button, we would again be stuck where we were in the C3 Part 2 section, which is three control groups all sitting in the same position, all visible at the same time, which is, uh, of course, a lot of clutter. So we not only need to specify what we'd like to be visible, we also need to specify what we'd like to be invisible. Now for this, again, just showing you guys some shortcuts and whatnot, you could simply select the uh, one that we had just completed, this displays control group, and uh, we can uh, duplicate it with control D. And we're going to tell it what we'd like to be invisible. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So we have display control group, we have Blu-ray, satellite, and Apple TV control group as well. So Apple TV control group we select here. And where our visibility was 1 for the display control group, our setting value here for the uh, Apple TV should become 0. 
Okay, we will now duplicate the Apple TV and we will apply the invisible setting to our Blu-ray player. So we just go back into this drop down menu and here we are, Blu-ray control group. Okay, and once more, control D for duplicate, and we need to make our satellite control group invisible. And so this is essentially becoming a toggle of sorts. Satellite control group. Okay, and now we have all of this taken place here. So we can go ahead and actually select the range of these ones and zeros because we have these four control groups and we know one out of these four is always going to be visible as we place this, uh, this uh, event in action on each button. One of the four is going to be invisible, the other three out of the four will be invisible. So let's move forward here to our satellite button group. Choose the button. And we could go ahead and paste that whole range into uh, into the onto the button here. So now <clears throat> I had already pressed Control C to copy, and uh, it's important you just click right next to the right of that gray arrow before pasting with Control V. Okay, let's see here. There we are. Again, my performance is not uh, not as it would be if I were not running this uh, video recording software. There we are. Okay, so on the satellite, my display control group needs to be zero, invisible. <clears throat> and my satellite control group will become one, visible. We get to repeat on the Blu-ray player and the Apple TV as well. Blu-ray player here, so we'll make the display invisible and the Blu-ray control group becomes visible. Again, display becomes invisible and the Apple TV control group will become visible. All right, let's go ahead and uh, enter our emulator mode here and take it for a spin. Display, there we go, we have its Unique control group visible now. Satellite. Has its unique control group visible. Blu-ray player. Has its unique control group visible. And finally, Apple TV. has its unique control group visible. Now you're looking at this and you say, hey, that was a good trick, but now I have four active call master buttons at the top of the screen here, don't we? So there is some additional uh, GUI elements that we need to be manipulated on each of these button presses, aren't there? Okay, so let's go ahead and we will add those 
uh, to each of these buttons. I'll just min min uh, minimize here and kind of start at the beginning again with the display button. And here, we're going to be able to It's very important when you add a new uh, event in action here, the whatever line you are you had selected, if you add a new one, it's going to be directly below the currently selected line. Okay, so uh, you'll see that time it just added it right in the middle, but going forward, I'll show you what to do, which is just click the last line before adding. So here uh, I'm on the display button, and we'd like to, uh, of course, make our satellite button and our Blu-ray and Apple TV button as well uh, all go into the up position when we press these. Uh, so we can go ahead here and choose again main page. And this is a good exercise in, in uh, these uh, GUI element property events and actions. So let's see the satellite button. If we, uh, well, I guess we're at the top here, so we could go right here. We have the button group, but what we'd really like to have happen is uh, pop up the actual Apple TV button. So let's take a look. What is that actual button called? Again, very important to name these things correctly so that when you're doing these lists and whatnot, ah, see, now here's the problem. And again, we want to show you what to do and what not to do. I had originally just duplicated each of these buttons, didn't I, uh, once I made the whole button group. Um, but I did not rename the button itself. I had only renamed the group. So this means we need to update the name of the buttons themselves, not just the group, because we have four items in the list called display button, yet we don't know which of the four we're actually dealing with there. So again, a good lesson in what to do and what not to do. Okay, so satellite, and now we could jump over to this Blu-ray button group uh, and change the name of the actual button from display to Blu-ray. And <clears throat> then we can repeat for Apple TV. Okay, very good. Now we can go ahead and jump back into that original display button. Again, starting at the top. And we have this incomplete event in action that says it's on the main page, but what is the element and what do we want to do with its value right now, right? And you can see that in the events and actions here. So we go into the properties of this event in action that we've added, and we get to now tell it the Apple TV button we would like to return to the up state when we press this display button. So in other words, this is uh, essentially a reset for all the buttons except for the one button we're working with here, which is the display button. We already have that as a toggle and as our first event in action. So we've completed the Apple TV. We can duplicate, control D, one, two, three times we'll duplicate to pop the satellite, Blu-ray, and Apple TV buttons all in the up position there again. Okay, so Apple TV, 
Now let's change it. So the Blu-ray button pops up. And satellite button. And now we get to copy this range of events and actions. Control C. <clears throat> Minimize our display button group here. And we'll paste these events and actions into the three remaining buttons. Again, I've selected here at the bottom. I'm on the very last uh, line here. And now I paste with Control V, and it should put them directly below that last line that I was on. There we are. So on the satellite, we want to uh, choose the, we want Apple TV to be up, the Blu-ray to be up, and the uh, well, it says here Apple TV, meaning I may have an error from before, but we also want the display button to uh, return to its up position when I se select the satellite button. Here we are, display button. Okay, let's go ahead and minimize the satellite group here. Blu-ray button group, we'll take a look at. Select the last line. Press Control V to paste. And in this one, we like the we would like not the Blu-ray. We would like the display button. to be returned to the up position, and we'd like the satellite button to be returned to the up position. Again, I think I spotted an error here because we do have some redundancy, Apple TV twice listed here as you can see. And uh, again, just as an effort of showing you what to do and what not to do, we'll just let it ride until we go. it becomes time to emulate, and then you could actually uh, you know, see uh, that error in action and we could kind of I'd troubleshoot to identify where the error is and uh, and of course then it's all part of the process from time to time okay so on the blu-ray the apple tv the display and the satellite button all pop up let's go ahead now and add our three up positions to our apple tv button now which when i press this apple tv button I would like the display button, the satellite button, and the Blu-ray button all to pop to the up position. So we'll start with the, we have Blu-ray, we have Apple TV, so we need to add display and satellite. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into our emulator. Control E. And we'll start from the right hand side here with Apple TV. Because again, I believe that there's an error probably at the in the display. So Apple TV, our control group comes forth, or it becomes visible, I should say. Um, select the Blu-ray. And 
there we go. It, the control group has come uh, become visible, and it has reset that Apple TV button to the up position. Satellite here. Okay. New unique control group comes forward, and the Blu-ray button that was previously in the active state has uh, come forth, or uh, popped to the uh, back into the up position, and finally display. There we are, and we can see that display. There's a little little bug in our programming there, isn't it? Uh, so let's jump back into that display and see where we went wrong. As promised, <laughs> we look at the events and actions, and we could see, yeah, that Apple TV is in there twice. Apple TV, Blu-ray, and Apple TV again, they all pop up, but the satellite does not pop up. because that Apple TV was in there twice. So now we could go ahead and satellite button, pop to the up state. And that, my friends, is the visibility toggle exercise. Now, let's move on to the visibility list exercise. And the visibility list uh, is different from the visibility toggle, where visibility toggle allowed our call master buttons to, to, uh, to apply a visible or invisible state to all of our control groups. The visibility list assumes that all control groups are actually visible except for they're going to be contained within a list, which uh, is, again, uh, what enables that swipe functionality that is familiar in iOS and smart devices. And so imagine, if you will, a wheel that is uh, turning towards you, uh, much like a merry-go-round, for example. And there's only one position that is directly ahead of you. And, and, and that is how the list works here, where all of the groups within the list are actually all going to be returned to a visibility of uh, one. They will all be visible, but we need to make it so that uh, based on what position uh, is the active position within that list is what is going to become visible here. So we'll show you through actions here instead of words if, uh, if that doesn't make any sense to you quite yet. So uh, let's go ahead and minimize our buttons because our uh, uh, we'll, we'll try to clean up this tree here a little bit. So we minimized our buttons and, and now we have our buttons and our control groups, uh, four control groups, all of which are currently set to a visibility of zero. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll move them over to become, uh, by default, uh, visibility one. And some of you guys may have just caught that it looked like I put visibility 10. Uh, yeah, probably not going to be any problem down the road there, but I don't know what that would necessarily do for us. So go back in, repair that, make it visibility 1, and continue through uh, to add visibility 1 for the rest of these uh, uh, control groups as well. Okay, so now we're kind of back in that familiar position again where we have all four of our control groups visible um, and they're all kind of overlaying each other and uh, doesn't make for a very neat template at all, does it? So we, what we need to do is uh, just as we had previously contained buttons and elements within groups, we're going to contain these groups within the list. Okay, so the list uh, must contain groups. It can cannot contain buttons. It all must be within a, a group there. Okay, so we're going to go over to our lists library here and open up our default list library. And you may recall the list library from uh, the walkthrough of the supplied 
libraries in C3 part 1. And in the list library we have what is called empty panel zones and that is an empty list. Now I'm going to drag this onto the iPad and the key here actually is that I'm going to put this in the exact same XY position as all of my groups had been and I'm going to put um, apply the exact same XY uh, or I'm sorry width and height dimensions to this list as well. So X and Y were at 330 and 385 respectively. And we know because we can just reference our uh, groups here that they are all 306 by 324. Okay, looks very familiar that size, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and uh, give it a good name to this. That will be Control Groups List 306 by 324. Okay, and now what we're going to do, just as before, we had dragged and dropped some uh, uh, buttons into group, right, into our groups that we had customized to get together. We're just going to go ahead and take the um, these uh, control groups and drag them into the list. And uh, whatever uh, you drag in first becomes list position number one and, and uh, works uh, sequentially after that. So if we want it to be in the same sequence as these buttons are kind of laid out, if we're reading them from left to right like a book, then display will be number one that we drag into the control group. Okay, let's see here. Yep, it's fallen in line there, uh, indented uh, from the the list. So now we could go ahead and take our satellite and drag it into the control group list. Okay. Yep, minimize that. We'll next move over the Blu-ray control group. to be position number three within the list. And finally, our Apple TV control group. And now we can see that only one position is visible. Uh, whatever I have selected here. And if I select the list here, we could actually view the properties of this list on the right hand panel here, which includes uh, kind of an emulator for the list, lets us know how many current positions within the list. For example, right now we have four. And I could press the plus or minus button to move one at a time through those list positions down or up. Or I could just grab this cursor and drag it. And you could actually kind of see this happen a little more fluidly when you do this. Okay. Um, now what we have here, uh, currently this is a horizontal list versus a vertical list. You can have two lists in one place. You could have a list within the list. One must be horizontal and the other must be vertical if you do need to have a list within a list. Um, selectable is actually for future use. And in circle means that uh, as you go, uh, if you're moving right from one to two to two to three, from three to four, and then you continue on through from four to one, it's going to go in that circle. And uh, similarly, as you move downward, perhaps from four to three, three to two, two to one, one to four, circles back around in a loop. Now, uh, a note to everybody. When you select in circle, it makes it look a little odd. 
as you can see now. Uh, the reason for that is that this is actually a feature that iOS supports and uh, the software is uh, fully supportive of, but it doesn't really sit too well with, uh, with Windows, okay? So when you're in your emulator here and you're in your software, it does not look too hot. When you upload this project to your iPad, it's going to look just fine, okay? Because uh, sometimes when you see what looks to be very odd, um, as far as the, the layering and whatnot, usually what that typically uh, means is that your groups are not sitting at a zero, zero position within the list. But as I scroll through uh, my four groups within the list, we could ensure they are in fact at zero, zero. And since in fact they are the exact same width and height, we know we're in, in good shape. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and deselect the encircle here uh, just for sanity's sake of uh, not forgetting and <laughs> wondering, hey, why does my list look all skew here? So, um, <clears throat> so now, now we have this list. And what we're now going to want to do with our visibility call master buttons is not determine uh, what is visible and wh uh, what is invisible or not uh, instead not to determine but actually not manipulate what is visible and what is invisible. Instead what we need to do is actually um, manipulate the list itself to be to move from position uh, to position one when I press this display button to move to d d position two when I press the satellite button, move to position three when we press the Apple TV button, and finally move to position four uh, when we press the, uh, excuse me, position three is the Blu-ray button and position four is the Apple TV button. So uh, unfortunately, my friends, that means that a good amount of work that we have here uh, that we had uh, completed previously in this C3 part three is, uh, is now going to be removed. So this could be a good time for you guys to uh, um, to uh, to save your project, uh, maybe even saving it uh, before we add this list. Um, if you if you like to kind of find nice breaks in the action and and, and save your project. Um, and what are we going to remove here? Well, it's really what is the visible and what is invisible, right? Uh, because we know by default now all of these are in fact visible. So we're going to actually select the range from, uh, from each group and delete them, uh, hitting the backspace key. Uh, just as a note, delete works only if you're selecting a single line item, okay? Uh, not if you're selecting uh, multiple line items and wanting to delete them. So let's go ahead and uh, move on through to the satellite and also uh, select that range. Uh, where we had all the zeros and ones specified and delete them. And remember all these events and actions are actually stored onto the button them, uh, itself, not in, onto the group, uh, that, uh, the custom group we created for these buttons. Okay, so we've now uh, removed all of the ones and zero events and actions, the visible and invisible events and actions on each of these buttons. And let's start back up at the top here with the display button and let's move forward with uh, adding a new event and action that is going to uh, manipulate that list to our desired position. So we add an event and action here that is again another GUI element property change. We're going to choose uh, and identify the element that we'd like to manipulate. It is located on the main page. Again, this project only has the main page at this time. The element name is control group list, as I've named it. 
and uh, you guys are probably following along with me. So control group list. And now we have uh, the value of this list is the property we'd like. Uh, there's other options in this drop down just so you guys could see this, but we're just uh, dealing with this uh, value, okay? Uh, value of that list that we've selected. And uh, what we're going to have here is, uh, is actually the, what it, list position we'd like to see. And we put them in in a pretty easy to understand way so that display control group is list position one because if you're reading like a book, our buttons there flow f from left to right with display being number one. Satellite group uh, is going to be position two, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we want when we press the dis display button to the list for the list to move to position number one. And now I'm able, just as we have done so many times, to copy this row with control C, move on over to my satellite button, and select the last row within its events and actions, where I will now paste. And when we do this pasting, we'd like what? We'd like the list to move, not to position one, because we know that's the display, uh, but we'd like it to move instead to position two. Move on over to our Blu-ray player here. And this will be list position number three. And finally, Apple TV. This will be list position number four. All right. And now we can go ahead and uh, emulate. And if we press display, we should be at list position number one. Looks like it had already defaulted there. Satellite should move us over to list position number two. Blu-ray player moves us to list position number three. And Apple TV moves us to list position number four. Now, to uh, the, the emulator can also, uh, you can also emulate your uh, swipe functionality, if you will, by pressing and holding. Sometimes it doesn't uh, work out as, as uh, well as you'd like. Let's see, okay, so there we go. This one's moving, it is moving a little slow, but it only just doesn't, uh, that, that slider, uh, the, the flick functionality. Uh, the only times I ever uh, having trouble with it is just in the emulator here, and it's usually user error. <laughs> um, but again, when you upload this to your iPad, you don't have any issues. Now, there is one issue that arises here from this. And that is, say, uh, uh, that I went to Apple TV, or let's say I go to my display here, display button, and I'd like to see its control group. And um, Everything's in sync right now, isn't it? I'm seeing the display's control group and my display uh, active indicator button uh, is, is active, uh, kind of in, in letting the user know what control group you're looking at there down below. But uh, if I do take this uh, and, I, and I flick it, um, it does not currently uh, move the visibility call master buttons. Okay, uh, trying to grab a hold of this in a good place again. Sometimes it's a little difficult with uh, uh, when you're in the emulator. Here you go. So here's an example. We are now looking at the satellite control panel, but my buttons here across the top still tell me display, right? So this is where now we have to uh, move into the call master active indicator. Okay, so we can go ahead now 
and we can exit emulator by clicking somewhere in the uh, tree that we have. And what we need to do here is tell the, uh, the list that when I move you, you need to move, pardon me, move the, uh, or manipulate the uh, graphical uh, user interface appearance of these four buttons across the top here, right? So how do we do that? Well, just like buttons and groups are able to have events and actions stored onto them, we could do the same thing with our list here. So I select my list and I'm already in events and actions. Currently there are no events and actions added to the list. And there are two options here, uh, new events that could be added to lists. Those, uh, those two options are change value and move value. And we're gonna select move value, which means that when I move the list, I'd like actions to take place and change value, you may now gather, it means that I'd like uh, or when something else, something else will be changing this list. So we're, we're adding a move value and, and these are gonna be some new events and actions here where for the most part thus far, you've only been working with that graphical user interface uh, uh, property um, action, event and action. Now we're actually going to add some do if statements, which is this uh, green uh, right hand facing uh, arrow. And it says, as I hover over, add if condition. Uh, if condition. And uh, as I add that, we're actually able to uh, shape the properties of this if condition. How many actions do I want to perform? Is it a, if this, list equals, is it, if, if this list does not equal, is it greater than, less than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. And we're gonna say, if this list is equal to, uh, position number one, okay. excuse me, the uh, position one, yes, but we need to tell it that it is going to be a uh, value property. Here we go. Trying to select this and this software, the uh, recording software is just slowing everything down here quite a bit. So excuse me for that. There we go. If this list, uh, we're gonna do one action. If the property of this list uh, the value, as we determined earlier, we have uh, the different value, value one, value two, value three, value four. So uh, different list positions. Uh, another terminology for that is different values. Uh, if it's equal to parameter number two here we're checking is one. We would like to uh, do what? Well, we want to link it to this display button, don't we? which means that that display button goes into the active state and the other three buttons go into the down state. So I'm going to add a link here. This is another new event in action uh, type that we're experimenting with. Let me uh, hover the mouse over here so you can see the description. Add link to another element's event action, right? Because we already have the up and down and all of those things stored within each of those buttons, don't we? So just like before with the graphical user element, uh, our interface uh, element property, we're able to, uh, we just need to identify uh, the button uh, here. And so it was called, I have everything nice and expanded on the tree here for a reason, it was called display button. event down. And uh, because we've only got an, a down event on the button right now, as you know, there was also the over, if you recall. Okay, so uh, if, if the list is at position one, do one action, which is link it to the display button down event. Okay, and now we're going to be able to 
copy these two line items by selecting them both, uh, holding shift while I select, uh, have already one selected and, and now selecting another. And you could see also, just like our tree, how it falls in line here is indented, okay? Uh, because it's one action that falls within the, the, the do if statement. If I had, say, two lines here and I only had do one action if, well, then the next line would not uh, be indented there. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I just uh, pasted, but did not ha have the last one selected. So let me uh, control Z to undo and select that last item. Now paste. All right. And now if our list is equal to position number two, we want to link to the actions of the satellite button. By the way, when you're in this list here, you could also just hit S, for example, and it jumps you right over to the S, as you may have seen. Here, I'll go up higher. There we are, satellite. Okay, so it jumps you right over there. Okay, and now I have these four items that just to save a little more time, I can copy the whole range of four items and select the very last line and paste where if my list is equal to position number three, we're going to link it to the Blu-ray button down event action. Okay, and finally, if my list is equal to uh, position number four, we want to link it to the Apple TV down event action four. Apple TV. Okay, and now we should be able to jump into our emulator and test this in two ways, which is one, as we press these visibility call active buttons, does the list move <coughs> with uh, or into the appropriate position? There we go, one to one, two to two. Pressing Blu-ray should call up position three of the list. Finally, pressing Apple TV should call up position four of the list. And now, as we drag to the left here, hopefully this uh, works. There we are. Okay, we could see that it has popped up the Apple TV button. And let's see, let's give this some time again with this video recording software. Ah, it did not move, and I think I know why. So now the question is, why is the uh, call active button, the visibility call master button, not going into the active position uh, as we toggle the list here? And, and that is actually a question of uh, the terminology we used before on each button where uh, we select here, we look at the events and actions, and we just moved into a toggle because a toggle is just one or the other, but it doesn't really um, specify that we want it to go in the over position. Um, it's really just a toggle between, again, up, down, over. We have three states of the button that the button can be in at any given time. Okay, so, uh, so what we need to do here is simply select uh, each of these, uh, this element value equals toggle that is uh, assigned 
as an event to each of these visibility call master buttons and change them now from toggle to over. So we're just showing you know all sorts of different options here in, in this uh, portion of the training, different options and, and what works when and, and uh, trying to ex explore many different ways of doing things so that you feel as though you, you have a wider spectrum of information there uh, versus just uh, having blinders on and, and hope, hoping things work without having a wide basis of, uh, of reference here. So we're going through and uh, we're moving it on uh, each of these four buttons here. I'm now on the Blu-ray button. We'll select its event in action for the toggle uh, where I had already copied the over text and uh, pasting it into that setting value. And finally, the Apple TV we will apply to here as well. And we're going to go ahead and where it says uh, toggle, let's see, this line is what I need, toggle, we're going to make that over. And now it is that time again to attempt the emulator here. And what we're looking for again is uh, the position to move, of course, uh, but also the uh, appropriate visibility call master button to become active. And uh, of course the button presses are working just fine. That was never really the issue. Let's go ahead here now and uh, see what happens as we uh, use the list here as we flick through the list to move from position four to position three, for example, in the list. There we go. Now it's working because we have specified the over position as the property that we've linked to in our macro for the uh, button down event. Okay, so uh, from Apple TV to Blu-ray. Um, again, the combination of this uh, recording software and also uh, just the emulator uh, working in the f the flick, the uh, list functionality sometimes creates some issues um, or isn't as easily controlled, let's just say, as on an iPad itself or iPhone or iPod Touch. But it seems to be working here 